Welcome to the Guide Exile. If you are watching this build guide after patch 3.5, Betrayal League, be sure to check the description, written guide, and pinned comments for the updates on the build for its current viability. Some items, mechanics, or skill selections may change in between patches, thus the build can differ from the video. For our first build of Betrayal League, well, second build for me, but first build guide of Betrayal League, we have ourselves an ever so popular Armageddon brand elementalist. Mmm, yes, more molten balls. There have been many renditions of this build within the first weeks of the League, so there are many options to choose from. For my variant, I chose to go with a hybrid Mind Over Matter setup using the recently reworked Eldridge Battery to gain more mana reservation space while still gaining effective health. So before we get into the build summary, I'm going to go over the new Armageddon brand skill, Eldridge Battery, and the new, slightly complicated unique that I'm using in this build variant to fully encompass the reasoning behind the build choices. Okay, so here's the short of it. Armageddon Brand does as its name implies. It brings upon the Armageddon on its enemies. It wreaks havoc upon monsters and your screen alike, bringing down a meteor that slams into the ground causing a large area of effect explosion. Brands are a new type of skill introduced in patch 3.5 that are a hybrid of self-cast and totems. You can cast a brand placing it on the ground like a totem, and then the brand scours its detachment range for an enemy target. During this time it is detached, as shown by the empty circle in the top left brand indicator on your buff bar. If there is an enemy within its range, it will attach to it and start casting on the enemy. The buff bar icon will now fill in for that brand. You are able to have three detached brands placed at a time with a limit of one attached brand per enemy by default. So for example, if you're fighting a group of three enemies, your three detached brands can then all attach to three enemies but only one brand per enemy. If you are fighting a boss, only one of the detached brands will attach to the boss while the others lie dormant, however this can be expanded as we will discuss later. Brands are also able to continue activation and casting on their own while moving around just like totems, letting us almost set and forget them on most bosses. On top of this, brands are considered as self-cast damage, and as such, life and mana leech can be used with them. So now that we know the basics of brands, let's touch on the long forgotten and recently updated Eldritch Battery. Eldritch Battery moves your energy shield to protect your mana, and will now be used as a resource for skills before mana. However, auras will still be reserved on mana. It recently saw a rework such that energy shield rate is no longer interrupted due to use of skills or taking damage to your life. This is great in general for Eldritch Battery as it is effectively fast and free resource regeneration at all times, and you do not need to worry about having regen or leech for sustaining. But when Eldritch Battery is paired with Mind Over Matter, the recharge will be interrupted due to splitting the damage we take to our energy shield now that it is protecting our mana. Luckily with the new Devouring Diadem Helmet, we are able to solve this issue. The Devouring Diadem Helmet is a powerhouse of a helmet that is currently an exclusive drop from the mastermind of the Syndicate in Betrayal League, but is relatively cheap within the League itself. It grants plus one to socketed level gem, 20% reduced mana reservation to socketed gems, Eldritch Battery with a 10% chance to trigger recharge on skill use, and finally, Feast of Flesh. Not only is Eldritch Battery granted from the item, but a 10% chance to trigger recharge skill on use is very powerful. This means if we spam some skills, we will be able to start recharging energy shield if we had stopped from taking damage prior. The other sustain from the helmet comes from Feast of Flesh, which automatically consumes nearby corpses every 5 seconds to provide 400 life, 400 energy shield, and 200 mana per corpse consumed, and it can go up to a maximum of 10 corpses, meaning that in most scenarios it will fully restore all life, energy shield, and mana. This is beneficial when the timing aligns during a heated battle or perhaps when you are out of flasks. So in summary here, we are able to use Eldritch Battery with this unique helmet to not only improve our effective life, but to also provide better sustain and space for reserving auras to support our Armageddon brand skill. So let's get into the full summary and see what other choices that we make. Phew, alright, now that we got through that lengthy introduction, we now have to summarize the rest of the build. As I mentioned previously, this was my second build of the League, however, many others started their League with an Armageddon brand, Elementalist, and it turned out to be very strong. This build also has budget in mind and can be put together for fairly cheap, using common uniques and rare items. The Devouring Diadem is certainly a strong unique for this build, but it could be done with or without it, or at the very least, started without it. Offensively, we are using Armageddon brand as the main skill. As talked about in the introduction, these brand skills are cast on the ground and attached to nearby enemies. Once they attach to enemies, they will cast at a base activation frequency that can be scaled via cast speed. Now by default, enemies can only have one brand attached to them at a time. This is increased to two via rune binder in the tree, removing the ability to place a totem without a multi-totem support, but enemies can have one more brand attached to them. This is an effective damage doubling. 
We also increase the total number of brands we can have placed via notables in the passive tree to bring our total number of placeable brands to five. So we run around with five active brands and can attach up to two brands on a single target. To manipulate our brands further, we use brand recall, which pulls all of our brands to our location, refreshing their duration to a certain amount, and in the case of Armageddon brand, causing it to activate once. This is very useful for quickly pulling brands to your current location or for a powerful single target assistance. Since all of the brands will activate, we can get all five brands to hit a single target if we stand close enough to them whilst we use Brand Recall. Brand Recall is also an instant cast and gains cooldown recovery rate with gem level. This gem only gets to a maximum level of six, but can be increased beyond that via Vol Corruption, Devouring Ditem, and Empower to allow us to recall brands very often. Now as an elementalist, we are able to apply Shocks at a 20% base value due to Beacon of Ruin, as long as we are able to apply a Shock with our hit. This means that we do need some chance to shock a small amount of lightning damage on our spells, and we are able to get 20% more damage, depending on other enemy takes increased modifiers. Due to our tree pathing and use of Orb of Storms within Unbound Ailments, we can scale the non-damaging ailment stat to increase the effect of our shock. In total, we garner about 55-65% to increased of effect of shock, to bring it to about 31-33% to shock. The Orb of Storms also serves as a great trigger for elemental overload, as well as an applicator for combustion that reduces enemy fire resistance since we have added flat fire damage to ignite enemies with on it. So Orb of Storms is an excellent utility overall for the build. To support our brands even further, we have Herald of Ash, Anger, and Aspect of the Spider. We are able to place Herald of Ash and Anger in the Devouring Ditem to increase their levels and power. And finally, we have a Scorching Rate to debuff stronger targets and a Vol Righteous Fire that we can trigger for some extra burst damage if necessary. But beware, Vol Righteous Fire will consume your energy shield first. Defensively, we have a couple of layers here. We have Aspect of the Spider and a 10% Chill from Beacon of Ruin. The Chill from Beacon of Ruin has the same rules as Shock application, in which we will need some cold damage. These will both hinder enemies' movement speed from them getting to us. Since we're using a staff, we can block and even grab some more block nodes to bring our native block chance between 42 to 46% attack block and 12% spell block. We can also pair this with a Rumi's Flask while mapping to bring those values all the way up to 66% attack block and 22% spell block with the perfect rolls. We're using Eldritch Battery with Mind Over Matter. This brings our effective life pool to around 7,000. That's not too shabby. We also have Life Leech, which can be gained from an Elder Amulet, Incursion Amulet, Fossil Crafted Rare Ring, an Anger's Watcher's Eye, or the easiest is a Barracks Grip Ring. This is a cheap ring that leeches life from shocked enemies, and as we mentioned before, we are always shocking enemies. If we do take massive hits, we have the Devouring Items Feast of Flesh, which instantly restores our entire life and energy shield pools. With the offensive and defensive mechanics explained, we can now move on to the playstyle of the build. For maps, you will simply want to run up to packs, place down your brands, and press your flasks. After which, you can run around or through the packs, pressing your recall when possible to pull the brands to your location and damage surrounding enemies. If you come across some more dangerous targets, simply cast a few brands in their direction, place an orb of storms to ensure proper triggers and shocks, and just move around, positioning yourself defensively. For bosses, you will want to place down your orb of storms and all of your brands. You can then let two of the brands go to town on the boss while you stand back and use Scorching Rate to debuff their fire resistance further while guzzling the appropriate flasks. If you're feeling more daring, you can run circles around the boss, spamming your brand recall, triggering the rest of the brands on the target, along with the two attached brands. This can lead to higher damage, but can be dangerous depending on the scenario. The Path of Building Pace Bane is included within the written script and description. The Ascendancy of Choice is of course our Elementalist class. There are a few arguments for other Ascendancies for this skill, but the Elementalist provides so many useful ailments and damage scaling. Pendulum of Destruction is a powerful node that is ultimately ruined by a timer, making it unreliable for damage or area, but it is necessary to get to the next more powerful node. Mastermind of Discord. This reduces the mana reservation for Heralds, increases the effect of Heralds, and gives elemental penetration for the respective Herald element. So this will be scaling our Herald of Ash, power, and value. Shaper of Desolation. This provides a rotating Conflux buff. Confluxes will allow us to apply their respective ailment of that Conflux, regardless of our damage type being dealt. So this means if we hit with fire damage during a shocking Conflux, we will be able to apply shocks even with that fire damage. Unfortunately, this is also on a timer, but this is more useful and reliable than the Pendulum of Destruction node. Beacon of Ruin, the crowning jewel of the Elementalist, allowing us to apply chills and shocks at a base value regardless of the damage dealt. Ascendancy progression is the following.
Here is the final passive tree. We're getting the following keystones. Elemental Overload. This gives us more elemental damage as we are not scaling critical strikes. Mind Over Matter. This shifts 30% of damage taken to mana, but in our case it is taken from Energy Shield due to Eldritch Battery. This gives us a much bigger effective life pool. Rune Binder. This allows for one more attached brand per enemy, which is good for our damage, but also removes the ability to place a totem unless we use multi-totems, which is not an issue for our build. For bandits, you want to kill all of them. For Pantheons, I chose Soul of Lunaris for the Major, for extra movement speed, some physical reduction, and avoidances while mapping. The Brine King is best for endgame content though to avoid chain stuns. For Minor, you'll want Soul of Garukin for more movement speed and avoidance. However, you could choose any of these that you would like, ultimately depending on the situation. Here are the gem links for the build. Here is a full 6 link for Armageddon Brand, even though I do choose to use Shroud of the Lightless which is only a 5 link. This is only because I could not get a 6 link Carcass Jack. So a 6 link will be more powerful, but these are in order of importance, so just drop the last one for your gearing. For maps you will of course want more cast speed and area to improve clearing speed, so here you will use faster casting and increased area of effect. For bosses you can swap faster casting and increased area of effect for elemental focus and concentrated effect. We can use Elemental Focus since Orbosorms can still apply our ailments, and Combustion is one of the best multipliers for our fire damage since we have so much flat damage already. These are in the helmet for the benefits of the Devouring Diadem. I recommend using the Crafting Bench method of Jewelers to color the helmet sockets rather than chromatics. This is for providing corpses for the Devouring Diadem when you are in a location without corpses. These do not need to be linked, but if they are, it is no big deal. For this build, you can certainly start on rare items and work your way to get the itemization you need. For the most part, you want to get gear with good amounts of energy shield to provide more effective life pool for your Eldritch Battery. Also keep an eye out for Aspect of the Spider on all gear slots. Make sure to check the written guide for affix priorities. The Devouring Diadem is the helmet of choice, and I highly recommend getting it. If you are unable to get it, you can use a rare helmet in the interim while gathering Eldritch Battery from the passive tree. Here I am using a Shroud of the Lightless. It is a great affordable pseudo 6 link that is not as powerful as a pure 6 link, but is a great stopgap. It has built-in elemental penetration gem for the 6 link, life, energy shield, and an abyssal socket. It also has shade form which can make you immune to physical damage and less visible to enemies for 3 seconds. My original choice for a chest piece was Carcass Jack for the increased area and damage, but the damn thing was Curse and would not 6 link after more than 2000 fusings, so I swapped over to a Shroud of the Lightless. You can of course use a rare body armor too, or even another unique body armor such as Lore Weave. Rare gloves are great here to fill in life, energy shield, attributes, and resistances. A great affix to look for here is the Shaper Socketed Gems are supported by Blind, which provides global blind chance, improving your defenses further. Rare boots are a good choice here as well to get high movement speed, life, and energy shield, as well as some resistances. A Stygian Vise as always, as we can socket in more damage via an Abyss Jewel. Other belt bases such as a Leather Belt will work just as well. Look for life, energy shield, resistances, and an open affix space to craft on percentage increased effect of non-damaging ailments. Here we want to start looking for accessories with Grant's level 20 to the aspect of the spider. Unfortunately, most of the accessories with this modifier have become very expensive due to popularization of it through multiple builds. So it may be more difficult to find this, but looking for a basic Grant's Aspect of the Spider, Amulet, Ring, or possibly other gear piece may do just fine. However, Aspect of the Spider is not required for the build, it is just a nice damage bump. As you can see here, I was able to get a basic amulet with just dexterity, life, and I crafted on some energy shield. For rings, we'll be using a Barracks Grip to garner the Life Leech against shocked enemies. This ring also provides some life, resistance, and flat lightning damage. For the rare ring, if you do not already have Aspect of the Spider, try and look for it here as a last choice. If you do already have it, you can search for Shaper or Elder Rings for more percentage scaling or flat fire damage to spells. Our weapon of choice is the Martyr of Innocence. This staff provides solid block chance, massive percentage increased fire damage, and a lot of flat fire damage to spells. On top of this, if we are to block, we gain 15% fire penetration. Overall, this is an excellent staff that you can get for a very cheap price while gaining a lot of damage. I chose to use the following flasks. Rumi's Concoction. I use this flask for mapping and for some bosses to provide extra defense with the block we have. 
For endgame boss fights, you can replace this with a wise oak, which gives more fire penetration as long as our fire resistance is the highest uncapped resistance. A quartz flask. This flask does provide some dodge, even though we aren't stacking it, but I mainly use it for phasing to allow us to pass through enemies while we brand recall. You could also swap this for a basalt if you wish, for more flat mitigation. A silver flask, just for more cast speed and movement speed. Quick silver flask, for more movement speed, to get through maps quickly. Make sure to roll this with an of adrenaline suffix. A life flask, finally a generic life flask to recover life in dire situations. Getting an instant recovery on one of these is preferable. I'll show some example jewels used in my build within the video, and leave their affix priority in the written guide. The only unique jewel that I used is a damage penetrates percentage of fire resistance while affected by anger watcher's eye. This is purely for damage and is not required by any means. For rare jewels, you will want to be looking for percentage increases to your damage, life, and cast speed. You will want at least one abyss jewel with flat cold damage on it so you can apply reliable chills to enemies with orb of storms. Getting lightning damage on it as well is beneficial for applying shocks with your Armageddon brand. For more information on leveling the build, be sure to check out the written guide. Man, I had to disseminate more information than I thought than I would making this guide. All in all, I was very pleased with the performance of the Armageddon brand and can certainly recommend it to anybody looking for a cheap build that can transform very easily into an endgame farmer. I mean, who doesn't want more flying balls that can slap the ground around you endlessly? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, Exiled.